JEDEF Healthcare Stories Nick Seamer uses American Sign Language. The voice you hear is an ASL interpreter. My name is Nick Zemer. I grew up deaf. I am profoundly deaf. And grew up in a town, Monticello, Illinois. That small town, I was the only deaf person there. There was a hearing community. I grew up in a mainstream school situation. At that time, I didn't know how to sign. I would speak a little bit, but I lip read. Wow. My teacher made sure I, that she looked at me, then I looked at her during class. I had to focus on her lips as I was taking notes. By the afternoon, I was so tired from lip reading. My eyes were just going buggy. After I graduated from high school, I decided to go to NTID, National Technical Institute for the Deaf in Rochester, New York. They have technical school there. I, when I got there, 1,300 deaf people. Wow, I was overwhelmed. My goodness, during the first few months, I was learning sign from friends as we would socialize, picking things up, learning things. Oh, felt wonderful. After that experience, I learned about advocacy. That is very important because uh, if we don't advocate for ourselves, people won't know what to do. How can they help us? How can we help ourselves? Um, last December, my wife and I decided to sign up for uh, what's called a birthing class. My wife, at that time, she was three months pregnant. So we talked about it and I said, I think we need to learn together birthing class, how I can help you get through the breathing and all the different things that we have to. My wife said, fine. We uh, signed up for a class and uh, I, decided, I notified them that I needed a sign language interpreter. And the, we signed up for that class. It was a four-week class. The teacher sent me an email and said, no, we cannot provide an interpreter for that class, but we would be happy if you could bring your own interpreter if you found one for class. So. I read the email, I realized they didn't understand my request for an interpreter. It was important for me to remain calm because they were resistant. They didn't want to listen to me. Okay. I need to have an interpreter for the class. The reason is primarily because I'm, I'm soon to be father. My child, will, my child is going to be born. I need to support my wife during the delivery. I also need to know things that are happening during the birth. Same, my wife needs to hear these things in class. It's important for me to, to get, see these things in class. So I sent that email back. I waited. About two months later, there was no response. Finally, they sent me an email. They said, nope, we're not going to provide an interpreter. I said, OK. The reason at that time, I, we have at a state agency, we have the Illinois Deaf and Hard of Hearing Commission. IDHHC. We contacted that advocacy group and I explained my story to them. They said, okay, I think we can help you out. And they helped communicate with the teacher of the class saying that they needed to provide the interpreter for legal reasons and another reason they needed to provide it was that the deaf father needed to be able to communicate with the mother. So we waited. Later, the hospital contacted me, sent me an email, said, I'm sorry, we didn't provide you an interpreter. We'll be happy to hire one for you. How do we do this? I sent them an email, said, hang on, I have already found an interpreter. I'll give you th that, was that information. So before I contacted them, I had contacted two interpreters that I know well, and I asked if they would be available for that date and that time. Could you? They both said yes. During the four weeks of that class, I learned so much from that class. Breathing techniques, how to support my wife to be calm, what to do if an emergency came up, all those things. 
I was just getting all kinds of information. Same time my wife was hearing it, I was getting it. We would talk about things. We were working things out together. Self-advocacy is very important because as a deaf person, I know what I want, I know what I need. That's the important part as I ed to educate other people about that. As one person, I can be successful. It means one person starts something positive. It goes forward to another person. It affects another and another and another and then it starts paying forward affecting a lot of people. People will understand how to interact better together. As you pay forward, you can change things that come back to you. The main reason why I picked the two interpreters in the class, I wanted the same two interpreters to be pr present during the birth itself because if I didn't understand what was going on, they could better help my communications in the birth, during the birth. So what happened was my wife and last April went to visit the doctor and I went with her to support her through that. Doctor examined her, said, you need to go to the hospital. My wife and I looked at each other and said, it's time to go. He said, yes. Why? He said, let's go and I'll explain there. Okay. So we went to the hospital, to the uh, birthing center. My wife was laying there waiting. Doctor came in and said, the reason I asked you to come here to the hospital because we're going to deliver your baby now. The cord is wrapped around the baby's neck. Plus, the head is in breech position. So at that time, my wife was having contractions. The cord would press, and the heart rate of the fetus was dropping. When the contraction stopped, the fetus could breathe again. The doctor wasn't sure what to do. Okay. So my wife said, do we think we need to have the baby delivered now? He said, no, let's wait a while. That evening, we were talking, and all of a sudden, several doctors ran into the room. I stood back. I said, what's going on? I decided not to interrupt and say, what's going on? They all came in. I waited. There was some discussion. They all left. One doctor was left, came up to me, and at that time, remember, my interpreter wasn't there yet. We didn't need the interpreter at that time. He, we wrote notes back and forth, said, your wife is having a contraction. For a one minute, the baby heart rate has dropped. We need to talk about, uh, we need to discuss with your doctor what we want to do about this situation. I said, okay, let's go ahead with this. At that time, I contact the interpreter. I said, right away, if you could come, please. We have a serious situation that's come up. I said, sure. The interpreter came. At that time, the doctor came, same time as the interpreter, talked with us about what we should do. The doctor said, we need to monitor your baby's heart rate for the next several hours to see what happens. If it becomes serious, we may have to go with the C-section. I said, okay. We said, okay. Every few minutes, my wife would have a contraction. Then the baby's heart rate would drop. When the contraction eased, the rate would go back up. So it went up and down like that over and over and over again. We started to get a little worried because at the same time, the doctor was saying, don't worry, we're just monitoring right now. Your baby is not in any serious danger. So. I felt much better about that. I was able to focus on my wife, supporting her through all of that. The interpreter was right there, helping her through with her breathing, helping her relax through the process. Everything I learned from class, all that, I remember I was using it right there. I was actively using it to help my wife. At that time, I, we, we were there for 30 hours. Okay, you observation for 30 hours. Finally, the doctor decided it's time to, hit, to do the C-section and have the baby born. When my wife was going through the C-section, the most wonderful thing happened. I was sitting with her. 
She was laying there. We just made eye contact. That's all that mattered because we realized soon our daughter would be born and we would be thrilled. That kind of communication you can't replace. The interpreters were there. They were ready, waiting for the doctor, but I just had one private moment with my wife. In the 30-hour observation process, we made eye contact. It was beautiful. A few minutes later, our daughter was born. Ruth Ginevra Zeman was born on Good Friday, 2011. We are so excited, checking. She's a wonderful, beautiful girl with blue eyes, crying, crying, crying. She was perfect. It was wonderful. My wife and I, we looked at each other. The whole world seemed to melt away from us. All we saw was each other. I said, I love you. She said, I love you too. That was it. Basically, everyone in that room is a team. They have a role to do on their own. My role itself is to support my wife. My wife's role is to help in the process of the baby being born. The doctor's role is to help my wife deliver the baby successfully. The interpreter's role is to help communication between the whole team so everyone knows what's happening. If one person is missing, that throws everything off. Having an interpreter present is, it's priceless. It's priceless. It's important for a deaf person like myself to be calm. If you get angry and you have conflict, that doesn't solve problems. It's important that we calm down, interact with people uh, on, a, on a calmer level because hearing people are already afraid of the interaction with deaf people. They don't know what to do. If we can relax them, let them talk with me, and the hearing people relax, they focus on the content. If I'm communicating with my doctor and they ask me, why do we need to have an interpreter? Well, I would say the reason is communication is a two-way street. If you don't understand me, you can't really help me. If I don't understand you, I can't provide what my needs are and how I can get help from you. If we have an interpreter in this situation, the communication flows smoothly both ways and we can eliminate a lot of problems. My wife informed me, if we don't have an interpreter present during the delivery, my wife said she would kill me. That would be it. So it was important to have an interpreter provided. People communicating, communication flowing back and forth between individuals. That's success. Healthcare Stories, made possible with generous support from the Manuel D. and Rhoda Mayerson Foundation. Nick Seamer was interviewed at Access Living Chicago, July 2011. For more information, visit the Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund website, dreadf.org forward slash healthcare dash stories. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 3.0 Unported License.